Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Healthy Heroes podcast. We are so excited to be here in our Wonder Woman series. And today I have a Wonder Woman with me. Her name is Lauren. And hi, Lauren. How are you? Hello. How are you? It's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I am so glad to have you. So I can see Lauren. If you're listening to this through our YouTube channel, you can see us. If you're listening on audio, you can hear us. Um, But she is just as beautiful as she sounds. (laughs) <laughs> so Lauren, tell us where you're from. Tell us about your childhood. Tell us how you got to being the empowered woman that you are now. No, I'd love to. So I'm from Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico, born and raised. I, I like to say I never escaped because it is 100% the land of entrapment. I always grew up and I was like, I am going to get out of here. That's all I want to do. And now here I am like absolutely in love with this place. And I probably will like stay here forever. <laughs> it's um, but I was super I was super blessed growing up I was very lucky I have two brothers I have an older brother and a younger brother who just play a huge role in my life they're my two best friends and then my um, parents I grew up with my parents and my grandparents we all lived in the same house um, so it was a big house that just was oh, mass chaos all the time and we all played sports and we were all going um, a million miles a minute and I think that's what built the foundation of what I, who I am today is just having so many different backgrounds and so many people that helped guide me um, into these different roles that I get to play now. And I am the only girl in my family. I have no girl cousins. I have, um, like, I'm literally the only girl. I have an aunt and then my mom. And it's just, it's wild. But I grew up a tomboy. And I am so thankful I did because again, that has led me into everything that I am now blogging about and now yeah, I'm interested in and now I, where I want to take my, my future, um, all of my careers and everything that I want to do. So I am very lucky that I had such a great family growing up um, and they're the ones who got me into the entrepreneur spirit and wanting to do things for my own. Uh, my mom and dad own many businesses growing up, but they currently own a salon and spa. And I got to learn from them how to build a business. And so now moving forward, those are like, that's what I'm passionate about is I'm ready to start my own business and take my blog as my first step to where I want to go in the future. That's amazing. And I love how you shared how your family, so I grew up my in a house just like you. It was my mom, my aunts, my uncles, my, my grandma, and there was like nine of us living in one house and everybody just kind of helped raise me too. And it was yeah. just, chaos. somebody was always coming in, out. They were bringing their friends over because they were in college at the time too. So, and I can totally relate everything that I am to today, even having that entrepreneur spirit, I got it from my family and they're all business owners themselves too. So totally feel you on the house of chaos, but it's a great thing. And it's funny how you said you're the only girl. So I was the only girl besides my aunts and my mom until all of them got married. And I was much older. I was already like 17 when the cousins came along. So like I had them all to myself growing up. (laughs) I know they're like, well, you're the middle child. Isn't it terrible? I was like, no, I'm spoiled. I'm the only girl. (laughs) It's great. (laughs) My husband, he likes to call not the middle child because he's the middle child in his family. He likes to say he was the center child. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. So Lord, I love how you're saying you're writing your blog. So what what got you there? Like, what are you currently, you know, working on, on the blog, the passion, what is going to be the passion behind the blog? So it's, I've always loved to write. I, even in middle school, high school, college, I was writing stories, writing books, writing whatever I could just to be writing. Um, and so my mom thought I was going to end up in sports journalism because I am so passionate about sports and I love to write. And it just, that's not where my life took me. I, played them instead of writing about them and then I found beer (laughs) 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 terrible terrible when said that way but it's really funny I I um my dad owned a bar when I was really young and so alcohol was never a big like thing to me it was something I grew up around and it was just kind of whatever so I never had that like crazy phase so when I was it was like four or five years ago I was trying to think of a good 
um, gift for my father's, for, for Father's Day present for my dad. And I saw a cool brewing kit and he's a big beer guy. And so I was like, okay, like this could be a fun little thing for him and I to do together. And so I bought it and gave it to him for Father's Day and we brewed a batch and we fell in love with brewing. And we started, that just became a passion for both of both him and I. And it's something I would start going, we have a ton of breweries in Albuquerque. So I'd start kind of brewery hopping and learning more and more about beer and just the process and people who brew. And so I started writing about it. And so that's where I decided to start a blog because I was like, I want to open a brewery. That is my ultimate goal. And I can't right now because my other passion project is I joined the military. I had, I had dreamt of being in the military since I was in seventh grade and I just had opportunity after opportunity. And so I never joined. And um, I ended up dating somebody in the military and I was like, perfect. Like, this is my tie to the military. We're good. And I was okay, well, we broke up. And I was like, missing that tie to the military. So I said, screw it. <laughs> I don't need someone else to do it for me. I'm going to do it. And so I'm 27 years old. I enlisted in September. And I am in the Air National Guard here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And super blessed. Super, I love it. I actually got my school for um, school dates for basic training this morning. Yay. So it's all happening. Thank yeah. you. So, and thank you for your service from all of us listening. No, it's like, I am just like so excited. And so that is something that kind of has put um, my life on a kind of a hold up with the brewery because I know this is something I am meant to do. Um, so I can't start a brewery right now because obviously I'll be gone a lot. And so my way to stay tied to that and start building that is the blog. Something else I like to do is write. So I thought they were a good tie together and kind of keeping me going um, with the, with the, at least getting it started, getting the name out there, that sort of thing and learning so that I can kind of make those mistakes <laughs> before. Awesome. No. Yeah. So are you going to tie in content as far as like, you know, your experience, what you're experiencing, you know, going through training and then also, you know, the beauty, you're going to kick, tie it, tie it all together. And absolutely. So I think because I mean, one, I won't be able to be drinking, so I won't be able to try new beers and get to brewery hop and have too much content to write about while I'm gone. So I think it's definitely going to end up tying into my life a lot. I think it's going to be more of a lifestyle blog, even though that's not what I intended it to be originally. Um, but I think it's important, one, that my readers get to really know me and what I'm going through, and that can help inspire people in maybe even chasing their own dreams, whether it's beer or not related, um, brewery not related, army not related. I'm in the Air Force, but... And so I, I, I'm not sure what exactly it's going to, what road it's going to take, what path, but I know that I have a lot to say and I just can't wait to get it out there. And so the name of the blog is actually Chaotic Freedom. And so it's not really tied to beer, the name at all. And I just know my life has always been chaos, how I've always described it. And because of it, I feel so free. And so that's where I came up with the name. And, um, I feel like those words tie together so well, especially with the path I'm about to be on. Yeah. So I, it, I was just about to say, it's catchy. It's you. <laughs> you say you know, several times when you, you know, tell it to people. So I like it. I love the title. And I definitely think, you know, what you said is you're using the Air Force. That's passion. That's a passion in you. But you're using this passion, obviously, to build yourself, to build your income, you know, your your financial, your retirement, all of that, you're using that, but you're also going to use it to someday build your brewery and to have that other dream, you know, come true. And, and that's entrepreneurship, right? A lot of us open up a first business so that we can start building that business so that someday we can own either another business or multiple businesses. It's funny how you say you want to own a brewery. One of my, <laughs> one of my dream projects and it's way out there, just like I said, um, like you shared with your Beery is I'm building our USANA business, which is a health and wellness company, but I want to build that so big that someday I want to open up a winery where I host 
couple conferences and women conferences. So it's funny how you said that. So when you when we were riding back and forth, I was like, oh look, she went to open a beauty and I would have a winery. <laughs> Yes. No, we, can, we can make some, but it's just, you know, that's, there's different reasons why people do different stuff. And that's kind of your passion. Your passion is, you know, the air force, but it's going to tie in and lead it to your ultimate passion. And you're going to have both of your passions. Well, actually all three, because the blog as well is all going to be great. So I love how you hit and you touched on that. And it's so important for people to realize that you know, we have these passions, we have these dreams, but a lot of people sometimes just let them sit in their heart instead of finding out a way to, like you did, how can I achieve them all by building one and, you know, make them all happen. So I, I love that about you. Um, so what is kind of the struggles that you're going through right now? Obviously you're getting ready to go in, you know, training and you know, how is life right now and the struggle of having all these passions all together and getting ready for this big step in your life? <laughs> no, I think my biggest, I don't know, my biggest thing is my comfort zone. I get stuck in this box where I'm like, no, I've been doing great. Like I can stay with what I'm doing, but I already know. I mean, I do all of the, the personal growth. And I know that if I stay in that comfort zone, like I won't be able to achieve what I want to achieve. Like what I'm dreaming of is so big that I can't, I can have to get out of this box. And so that for me is the everyday struggle of it is 7am. I didn't get home from work until midnight because I now work at a brewery so I can learn. And it's like, you really did cover all your areas. <laughs> my job of three years and I was like take a massive pay cut and I was like I have to do this and he was like okay take a luck. pay cut now so that later on when you got that business you already know everything <laughs> no I need it I'm like I don't want to learn from my mistakes I want to learn from everybody else's <laughs> but yeah so I get caught up in the motivating like even getting ready for basic training where I'm like I have to go run I have to do these push-ups I have to get my butt out of bed and I have to do all of these things that I need to do. I have to start blogging. I have to start working on my business plan. Like every, all of these busy, all of these different things, all of these different steps that'll get me to where I need to go. But it's so easy to not. It's so easy just to get so stuck in that comfort zone, that little box that I just am like, but where I'm at's pretty good. Like everybody kind of likes me already. So <laughs> it's, it's continuously pushing myself and pushing myself to be better and move forward, but bigger steps than I normally would because I have really big goals and they need to happen. That's awesome. And so you just said something that's important that you've really learned how to focus and say, I have to write, I have to get out of bed. How has shooting for your dreams, like what has that taught you about yourself about others, about life in general? <laughs> Gosh, everything. <laughs> that, is, that is such a big question because I, um, I found you through Rachel Hollis and I went to her conference with my mom and that was my mom's birthday present. We bought it for her so we could do a little uh, girls trip together. And I think one of the number one habits that has completely changed everything with the motivation and getting out of the box and also realizing every all of the how how it's taught me is the writing gratitude every morning and okay. just like it really just every day sets you up for thinking positive and knowing what you're doing is working and what you're doing is it, you're able to continue because you're always looking on that positive note of what am I going to be grateful for today and I love the writing down dreams and that's something I've always done my whole life and like done goal setting in every year, but adding that gratitude to my morning routine is been life changing. And so I think that's been one of the biggest things. Um, also how much, like how I fuel my body. Um, I lost, I had to lose 30 pounds in order to get into the air force. And so I, I didn't want to give up beer because that's something I'm passionate about. And so, <laughs> so you had to learn how to work out really hard. <laughs> I just I limited it, and I just like I 
really just became conscious of every single thing I was putting in my body and why I was putting it in. If I was like, I don't like to drink to get drunk. That is just not the person I am. I love beer because it, it, I love to learn about it. I can drink a new beer and be like, pretty sure they brewed it with this hops. Like it's, it's just you appreciate the flavor and the work that went in behind to actually make Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And so it, I looked at everything. I took that because alcohol is such a bad connotation and everybody's like, you have to cut that out if you want to lose weight. And I was like, well, I want to look at everything. So I looked at when I was meal prepping, why I was eating these foods and learning all of the nutrition and all of the reasons I'm putting whatever I'm putting into my body. If it was because I was sad, I didn't like it. I had, I was like, there's a bigger problem here. So, because that was the biggest thing I had was like, I'm like a comfort eater. And so, um, changing the whole mindset with me for food, that was one of the biggest things that actually like getting out of this comfort zone and chasing these dreams has taught me. Like I had to change so much, but it's so little compared to what I know I'm going to achieve. That's awesome. Yes. And I agree with you. I think health looks different for everyone. I think that's important for everyone to find their health. You know, just like you said, you took a look at where, what you were putting in your body, when you were doing it and how you were feeling, because that's so important to notice nowadays. Now, if we really want to have that beer or that glass of wine, you know, it has to be because we really want to sit down and enjoy it, not because we're running away from a problem or, you know, fast food or a cheat meal, you know, is it a special friend's birthday or is it a wedding, you know, things like that, then it's okay to enjoy stuff like that, but not just reach for it daily. So I love that you do that. That's kind of the same way I balance out my life as well. I also love, you know, to have a glass of wine when I want to as well. So I, I understand and I'll balance. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to have wine or we're going, you know, out, I'm going to make sure my eating is, you know, 100% on point. I did my workout for the day and then I can feel like, oh, okay, I can do this. <laughs> so, I don't want to live my life feeling guilty about what I'm putting in my body. So like making that decision, I know, okay, I'm making this decision to enjoy this beer. I'm not going to feel guilty about it. Yes. And so I think that's the, that balance you're talking about. is just so important in life. Yes, I, I 100% scouts honor. That's awesome. <laughs> and that's the key. So if you're not doing that in your life, you heard Lauren, you heard me say it, find your balance and really think about what you're putting in your body and why you're doing it. So Lauren, you have obviously you have done, you know, self-love for yourself by, you just mentioned, you've been watching what you've been putting in, you're exercising now, you lost 30 pounds, you're ready to go into, you know, basic training, you know, and having that self-confidence, how has your self-love and your self-confidence played a role in your life in general, but also in really, you know, finding out those passions and digging them out and being like, okay, this is what I want to do with my life because that's what people struggle with so much is how do we pinpoint exactly what we want? But I think it comes from that self-love and self-confidence. So how has yeah. that been for you? So there was a time, I haven't always been this way. <laughs> there was a time, I want to say, I think it was about three years ago, I was in a CrossFit competition and it was the open. And so it was a five week competition and I went to the gym and I wasn't working out regularly. So it was a really rough competition. And there was this voice in my head that was terrible. And it was just like, you can't do this. Why are you even here? Just every negative thing you can absolutely think of. And I finished the workout and I didn't talk to anybody. I put my stuff in my bag and I left. And I was devastated because not only was my workout it wasn't how I wanted to perform, but that's not what I was so upset about. It was my head. I was like, where did this come from? Why, why is there so much hatred? Where is the, who is saying this? Cause I know it's not me. And I was actually listening to a podcast and I can't even remember what it was at this point, but it was, somebody said, if you listened to, if they played your voice on a microphone or in over speakers, would you be proud of what it says? Wow. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Like this, that, that changed my life right there. 
And so that was on week three of the competition. So I said, I don't care how I perform for the rest of this competition. I am going to show up for these next two weeks and my voice is going to be better in my head. That is it. And so every time, I mean, obviously it wasn't perfect, but I kept going and I kept saying, you got this. No matter if I was forcing it, if I was really struggling in the workout, no matter what I said, it was positive. And if there was a negative thought in there, I just pushed it out. And I just, through the next two weeks, that was my only focus. And that was life-changing. That has completely changed changed my self-confidence with my relationships, with my family, with everything I do, every person I come across. I know that I overcame something so hard and I never know what those people, what everybody else's thoughts are. And so I try to just be positive and that just like changed everything completely. Self-love, love to everybody else. And so that was, it was just, it was great for me. And so um, on that same podcast, there was something, if you list everything that you love, when would you come up on that list? And I was like, weird. Like, so it was a step-by-step thing. And I had, I was like, okay, I'll do it. I'll play along. And I start listing everything I love. And then they came out with the, where are you on that list? And I was like, I'm not even on that list. And I was like, I've got work to do. Mm -hmm. And So for the past three years, that has just been a huge focus of mine. And I just listen to podcasts. I um, go to conferences. I do leadership trainings. And I just, that is my focus. Even though I have all of these passion projects, I know that I can't be who I need to be if I don't love myself first. And I can't be in a relationship if I don't love myself first. And so that has been just a huge thing for me. That's awesome. And, you know, that's so true because we forget about the number one person and it's us, regardless of our roles in life, whether we're daughters, we're sisters, we're mothers, we're, you know, uncles, aunts, best friends. It doesn't matter. All that matters is how we treat ourselves. And, you know, I had a reality call like that too, where I was just like, I don't even speak. I don't speak to anybody like the way I speak to myself. So why am I doing that to myself? And, you know, that was just kind of a reality. Like I'm taking care of everybody else. You know, I feed them positive stuff, but in the inside, I'm like the weakest person in my mind. So I had to go to work too. And I love how you said, you know, you noticed that you had work to do because that's the number one thing in developing a strong mindset is you have to work at it daily. It does not like you, you could have an awakening call, but if you don't listen to podcasts, if you don't read books, if you don't go to conferences, if you don't fill that cup, it's just a thought. And a lot of people do that. So I like to encourage people just to do what you did and just follow those steps. And it has really drastically helped me. And, you know, earlier when you mentioned that, you know, we went to rise and we met And that was just awesome. And that's why going to conferences like that, that's one of my favorite things because that's where you find people that are like you. Like you don't find them, you know, just walking around like outside. Like that's where you find the crazy people (laughs) that are just like you. And so you meet connections and you grow and, you know, you watch them on social media. That's one of my favorite things because One thing with me is I do not like to flood my social media with anything negative. If I see it, I will unfollow, I will unfriend because what you see is what you're going to get in your mind too. So love how you have gone to work on yourself and all of that as well. So the big question is when is the blog going to be somewhat out or what is your goal date um, to really I had things ready um, for start of the new year, and I was pretty excited to launch it, Um, but my dates are in February. Oh, yay. So um, I won't be back from basic until um, probably end of April, depending on, you know, how military things go. Things always change. Um, So that's kind of an up in the air thing right now. It honestly is. I, I'm not sure if I want to launch it and then leave it sitting for a couple of months or if I want to wait till I return to launch it and then just have a launch ready and roll with it. Um, so, so I guess that's our 
I guess the thing is, is you have to go follow Lauren, become her yes. friend, keep, up, keep up with her if you're listening and you're excited about this, this um, blog, just like I am, then she will announce it when she's ready. When you do launch the blog, are you thinking, is your goal once a week, once a month, you know, to put out an, an article? Yeah, so I definitely want to start with once a week. Um, I have a couple sections right now that I have like featured content just because um, there's so much I want to share and get out there right away. So at the beginning, it might be a few times a week just to get get everything out there. But the goal is absolutely once a week, um, have something out and keep it rolling that way. That's awesome. So excited for you and, and can't wait. I will be one of your fan readers and I will share it too. <laughs> so Lauren, how can someone follow you? How can someone, you know, just kind of, if they're interested in just keeping up with you and waiting for the blog or the Bury or your journey through the air force to come out? <laughs> I appreciate it. So, um, the thing I'm most, I use the most is Instagram. Um, and so my tag on Instagram is Lauren Mac 20 L A U R E N M A C two zero. Um, and then I have an Instagram for the, the blog already, but I'm going to launch it through mine um, to start. So it'll be chaotic freedom. Um, you know the name, it'll be chaoticfreedom.com is where you'll find the blog. Um, I already have everything ready. It's just, I'm going to launch it through all of my personal stuff. Um, so follow me first and you'll definitely know when I leave for basic because I will be the one freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And you can follow her journey too. And yeah. When she does launch it, we'll make sure that, you know, from us at the Healthy Hero Show and, and on my Facebook and my Instagram, we'll definitely let our audience know too. Thank so you. one of my favorite things for everyone that I interview before I let them go is I always like to hear the different empowerment quotes that they turn to. When your mind is getting new, you know, when you're feeling down, what is your number one to go to quote? <laughs> That's such a good question, and I'm struggling because I have two. Is that okay? okay if I two? Share two. Yes. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not the first. Everybody's like, "Can I share two? I've had. I have four. I'm like, okay, get it, girl. <laughs> so my first one is: some succeed because they are destined to, but most succeed because they are determined to. And that was a quote I was given by. Um, one of my friends before I entered my first state softball tournament. Mm -hmm. And that was, gosh, in like 2005. <laughs> so it was a long time ago. And that is something I have always just let like rule my life. Yes, people may be succeeding next to you and they may not be working near as hard as you are, but I am going to succeed because I am determined to succeed and that is me. Um, so what everybody else is doing doesn't matter. Um, so that's my number one one. And then my second one is like, like my kind of like life motto. And it's um, be inspired, but always remember to be inspiring. So I think both of those things, it's hard to, I get stuck on one or the other. I'm like, okay, it's my job to be inspiring, my job to be inspiring. And I forget how many inspiring people are out there and I need to continuously be inspired to refill my cup. Um, so those are, I need to always keep those together. So I always, those are the ones written on my mirror. That's awesome. And you're right. They go hand in hand. We have to yeah. do both. We have to be inspiring, but we also have to let other people inspire us. And that's okay. That's yeah. the number yeah. one thing about life is that it's okay to do that. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Lauren. Everyone go follow Lauren McMullen. I will make sure I put your Instagram handle on the post as well. And thank you so much. You're amazing. And I can't wait to follow, keep following your journey, but also just to see everything that you will accomplish in your life and be there in your corner rooting you on. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye everyone. Thank you all for listening. And we'll be back next week.